It's Platt, and today I ask the question, iced tea, will it ferment? That's next. All right, so this particular liquid I've been looking forward to for a while. I've had a lot of questions a lot of people ask me about. Using iced tea, brewed tea in some form or fashion, can it ferment? And to be honest with you, I, this one I'm not real sure about because I'm not a big tea drinker. I don't drink a lot of iced tea or even hot tea. Uh, nothing I've read about tea tells me that it's impossible, that there's either too much oil um, in the tea or, you know, anything like that, byproduct in teas that would halt the fermentation. Now, there's no natural sugar source um, generally in tea, so that would be a prohibitive deal. But one thing we've learned in this series, um, we can add sugar, <laughs> we can add fermentables, that's the easy part. So, uh, with that being said, let's go over first real quick what type of tea I'm using. If you go down your tea aisle in any grocery store, you can see there's all kinds of different products out there, black teas, green teas, you know, especially hot teas. Um, almost the soft drink like tea blend flavor blend stuff like that so just real quick want to go over what exactly I've got I got right here one gallon of 100% natural that's important Arizona iced tea with lemon flavor now I want to point that out this is not an Arnold Palmer like uh, drink I get a lot of questions about that too those drinks tend to be more almost soft drink like and some of them do have a lot of preservatives, so I've kind of steered my way away from that. Maybe a future video we try that. Um, main reason why I bought this was the 100% natural part. And I did a little more research and I read on the back. Not only does it claim to be 100% natural, but it claims no preservatives, artificial colors, or artificial flavors. That's important. Uh, we've really talked about the preservatives throughout this whole video series because you know, whatever it is you want to ferment, you want to avoid preservatives. So that was a huge chunk of reason why I picked up this particular tea. I'll uh, real quick go ahead and read the rest of the, uh, all the ingredients. Premium brewed blend of black teas using filtered water, high fructose corn, corn syrup. Now that is something as humans we want to avoid, but as far as fermentation goes, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, again, we need a sugar source. For the yeast, high fructose corn, corn syrup works just fine. Um, it, all, it notes that it's a blend of glucose and fructose syrups. Again, both of those we've used in brewing before, so that's not a problem. Uh, next ingredient is citric acid. Citric acid, we learned, is basically your vitamin C. That gets used in a lot of um, drinks or seen. Uh, orange juice, obviously, is a perfect example of that, and we we're able to ferment that, so that shouldn't be. An issue and then last but not least natural lemon flavor now we talked about this in other videos something gets labeled as natural flavor but really didn't describe well, what does natural mean or how is it naturally made so we really don't know there but nothing on this label tells me that we shouldn't be able to ferment so that is good so that means next step we're going to do is we're going to do a hydrometer reading just to kind of see where we start off with, see how much sugar we're probably going to have to add. Like I said, there's a little high fructose corn syrup in there, but I got a feeling we're going to have to add uh, some more in there, similar to, uh, I believe it was the sports drink. We had a little, add a little more sugar, even though there was some um, corn syrup or fructose in that drink. Have to add more. We're probably going to do in here. So let's do a gravity reading, see how much more we need to add. Um, then add whatever sugar we need it, and then we'll get uh, to the point of pitching our yeast. All right, so I poured out a little sample, and uh, we're going to do our first little gravity reading. See where we're at. Oh, wow, that is a little higher than I expected. Um, a little truth in advertising. I did take a little sipper just to see what I'm working with, because, again, I saw that high fructose corn syrup. There's a little sweetness to that, so they put in a decent amount of uh, 
high fructose corn syrup because we're getting a 1.040. Um, that right there, like if we were just, if we'd start off with blank water and added sugar to get us to 1.040, we could almost let that go itself. We'd probably be in the threes, alcohol percentage-wise. Um, again, because I'm not real familiar with tea, haven't done this experiment, I'm going to say some of that buoyancy you're reading may be tea-related, not just the corn syrup. So what we're going to do is we're going to pitch in a uh, one cup of sugar into this, and then we'll do another gravity reading, kind of see where we're at, project where we're at, and then probably time to pitch in the yeast nutrient and the yeast. So let's uh, add our sugar and come right back. All right, so I went ahead and put a full cup of regular table sugar in there. So now we're going to do another gravity reading to see, uh, see where we'll start off at. And we're going to come out at around 1.060 doing some preliminary math if we get down to 1.010 we should be around six and a half percent alcohol by volume that is more than enough what we're looking for um you know that's now in the bach beer range just uh, to kind of give you some parameters um most of your pale ales are going to be around the low five so again uh, something to shoot for um so with that being said, all we need to do now is go ahead and pitch. I'm going to add uh, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient, and then we're going to pitch our yeast. For all these experiments, I've used SAF Ale USO5, a real nice, clean fermenting kind of generic ale yeast. Again, use whatever you want. Uh, I do advise yeast nutrient, um, especially in experiments like this because we don't know... You know, unlike doing it with grape juice or apple juice or certain juices that you know through the tannins in the skin or that there's something, you know, nutrient-wise for the yeast, we want to play it safe. So always uh, in these experiments, I always suggest a little bit of yeast nutrient, and I'll leave a link down below. But anyway, we're going to pitch these two. We'll come back in a day or so to see if we get any bubbling, and then we'll come back at the end of the week and do our gravity reading and uh, see if it fermented. So until then, I'll see you in about a day. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours, and you can see we got a good bit of bubbling, the airlock, uh, you can see pressures building. So it looks like we're on pace to have a good fermentation, so we'll come back at the end of the week. Okay, gang, so it's been about a week um, since we started the fermentation. Just looking at it, I'm still getting a, a decent amount of bubbling water. It still appears to be somewhat active, but we've always, as far as the series goes, kind of used one week as something to shoot for. Uh, so real quick, let's check our gravity to see how much, if, it, if it's fermented and how much alcohol we have produced. Uh, our original gravity was 1.060. I wanted to say, my original notes, I think I'm shooting for 1.00. That would have got us like a uh, high six or something like that. Uh, yeah, six and a half is what we're shooting for, mid to high sixes. So let's go ahead and give our gravity a try. All right. Well, we are not going to, we are not near the 1.01. Oh, they were shooting for. We're kind of 1.020, 1.025 probably is where we're at. Doing a little rough math there, though, that still gets us to about 4.5% alcohol by volume, which is comparable to Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, you know, the domestic beer. So, when we ask the question, iced tea, will it ferment? The answer is yes. Uh, I, I got a feeling if we let this go a few more days, we might get to that 6.5%. But uh, over one week, we got 4.5%, which would definitely serve its purpose. Now the next question is... Um, what does it taste like? So let's uh, give her a try. Let's see, I'm kind of interested because we haven't necessarily fully fermented. Maybe some of that sweetness is left over, you know, from the sugar we've added. Let's give her a try. All right, smell the yeast on it. Let's give her a try. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. This is absolutely delightful. The hint of lemon, it would, you know, I said at the start of the video, this was kind of a lemon flavored tea. One of the Arnold Palmer was kind of a lemon flavored iced tea. That lemon comes through and it kind of cuts some of that yeasty, you know, taste we get sometimes in these fermentations. Oh my gosh, yeah, that, uh, I think, I think again, because we haven't gotten a, a, you know, a truly efficient or completed fermentation yet, some of that sweetness is also left over along with that kind of lemon, you know, tartness. Man, this is, <coughs> I'm going to say easily, by far, out of the things we ferment so far in the season series, this is the best by far. Man, this is really nice. I I could jump into a glass or two of this, no problem. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.